Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I covered the initial murder of Tashan Daniel, the senseless killing that took place in a tube station. He was an Arsenal fan and I'm sure he would have been thrilled that Arsenal have just won the FA Cup. This took place at Hillingdon Tube Station in North West London. On the afternoon of the 24th of September, the aspiring athlete Tashan Daniel kissed his dad goodbye and left the house to go and watch his favourite football team. Within minutes, the 20-year-old lay dying at Hillingdon Tube Station in North West London. He had been stabbed by Alex Lanning with a weapon designed for military aviation rescue missions and it was capable of soaring through laminated glass. Alex had walked from the opposite platform to confront Mr. Daniel after asking him, what are you looking at? He was getting the worst of the fight that he had initiated, and the old Bailey said at this point he pulled out the £250 German-made knife and plunged the whole blade into his victim's body. What can be revealed after his conviction is that 22-year-old Alex Lanning, who had been found guilty of Mr. Daniels' murder, was on licence at the time of the killing for a similar attack in 2016. In March of 2016, Lanning was charged with attempted murder of William Goodfield after a crack cocaine and heroin deal went wrong near the I-360 in Brighton. The victim survived but was stabbed seven times in the chest and had injuries to the back of his head, groin, torso and hand. He was aged 18 at the time and Lanning pleaded guilty at Lewes Crown Court to the lesser charge of wounding with intent and supplying Class A drugs. He received a four-year sentence but was released in 2018. The family were angry at the fact that he still had his liberty and he was free at the time to be able to kill their son. The family also have a petition as well, so if you wish to sign the petition, which tens of thousands of people already have, it is to encourage the government to heighten the sentence around knife crime Tishan's father said, It was a real shock. I was horrified to hear what someone had done. Stabbing someone multiple times, walking the street in less than four years after doing it. He had obviously never been rehabilitated and didn't learn and had a total disregard for the system. Mr. Daniel was a talented athlete and was determined to achieve his goal of going to the Olympics as a 200 metre sprinter. And the afternoon he was killed, he had treated himself to a birthday present. He had turned 22 days earlier and got tickets to see Arsenal play Nottingham Forest in the Carabao Cup. He was with his friend, Treyon Campbell, when the pair were confronted by Alex Lanning and his accomplice, Jason Camille. The old baby heard how train passengers looked on as a scuffle broke out on the platform and the men broke into two separate fights. An eyewitness says Mr. Daniel was defending himself successfully from Alex Lanning. And then he got stabbed with the aviator knife that was made by a German manufacturer called Icorn. It penetrated the 20-year-old's lung and also his heart and cut into his breastbone. A pathologist told the jurors, adding that he had lost two-fifths of his blood. Mr. Daniel's parents, Chandy and Celia, rushed to the scene at the tube station after hearing their son had been stabbed. They watched in vain as paramedics tried to save his life and his mum was able to hold his hand in the final moments. By this time, Alex Lanning had fled the station and he ditched his bloodstained clothes and hid the knife in a nearby estate and then he went on the run from police. How he came into possession of the aviator knife would become a central part of the murder defence. In the days following the death of Mr. Daniels, those who were close to him were visibly de devastated as they had many vigils at the train station where he was killed. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the family's local MP visited them at the home in Hillingdon. The 20-year-old's running coach, parents and sisters gave emotional interviews on TV and appealed for the killer to hand himself in. We are all here today to show solidarity, show support for one another, to try and stop these senseless acts of knife crime. We want tough action. We want the government, whoever that might be, to stay to stop saying the right things on the news and in the newspa newspaper articles and to act now. We are fed up of hearing about another death due to knife crime. We want this violence to stop. No more to this violence on our streets of this beautiful city called London. We love our city. We need action now. 
Lanning spent almost a fortnight on the run from police, who quickly pieced together who he was. Alex Lanning admitted manslaughter at the Old Bailey and slept rough before his arrest on the 4th of October in the City of London. And when they had left, they discarded their clothes and actually were seen leaving an estate in floral pyjamas. So I don't know if they thought this was going to be discreet. During the trial, Alex was trying to make reasons as to why he was in possession of the murder weapon. He claimed he had took it as a memento from a film set when he was working on the Fast and the Furious action film F9. He was explaining in court that it was a day-to-day prop and he was moving them from the storeroom. It was at this point that he came across the aviator knife. He said, I I had gadgets and I had to clear them out. Knives and all these sort of things. I decided to take it. But the jury heard from the Fast and the Furious property master, Chris Cole, who said that Alex Lanning only ever worked cleaning and unloading trucks at the Warner Brothers studio in Hertfordshire. The responsibility for obtaining the knives used in the movie was Mr. Cool's, the old Bailey was told, and he would only ever use two manufacturers, neither of them were Icorn. He was certain that the knife had not been acquired during the production of the film and would not have been needed in the film, and if the knives were used on set, they would have been blunt. Alex Lanning's claim about the knife was yet more emotional turmoil for the family as they heard details about the weapon over and over again. Tashan's mother Celia said she was heartbroken to see the knife in court and questioned why any human being felt the need to carry it. It was nonsense, she said. The claim the weapon had been taken from Warner Brothers Studio. He was saying in trial he was carrying the knife around as memorabilia from the Fast and the Furious film set. The defence team made a big thing about where he got the knife. The point of the matter is for us walking around with a dangerous weapon. The defence did not work and Alex Lanning was convicted of murder. His accomplice, Jonathan Camille, was cleared of murder but found guilty of manslaughter. Mr Daniel's family said the verdict at least means the trial, which was delayed because of the pandemic, is now over. It's been really tough and their sleep patterns, he says, have been out of the window. Each day, he says, is a new sense of drama. Seeing the CCTV, the evidence, the murder weapon, it was really harrowing and we're glad it's all over. They are also trying to get the Hillingdon Athletic Club name changed to the Tayshan Daniel Athletics Club. So I believe there's petitions for both. I will leave links in the description for both of them. I'd really appreciate it if you pay respects in the comments below. And I'll be back again very soon with some more news. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Peace.